Building on the concept that we just explored with the plane, let's take a look at this gear selector to see how that works in 3D. I've included a side view and top view and a few model variations that you can always show how easy it is to get different forms once you have the initial cage created. Let's start off with a, just a side view. I'm gonna turn the canvas transparency up a little bit. And we're just going to use a simple one degree curve to begin with. And we'll just kind of place this out here. We wanna be slightly larger than the form, um, but it doesn't have to be exact. We're just going through really the steps at this point. Immediately, I'm gonna use the extrude tool in order to pull a form out of this shape. Let's go to the side view. I'm going to offset that a little bit from the edges, going normal to that. That will give us a little crown, and then we'll pull that out, something like that. Let's go to the top view, and we want to be basically just on the inside of this fillet, somewhere in there. Why don't we just pull that in? Excellent. Looking at this form, you can see that it's really soft. We'll need to add some additional edges in the corner. To do that, we have a bevel tool, and this bevel tool will allow us to basically chamfer the cage in those corners, and the further they are away, the softer the form. Hit spacebar, select the next one, we'll tighten that one up a little bit, spacebar, create the next one, and we have basically four different corners that we're able to practice this on. And uh, yeah, that looks fine. It'll be, it'll be all right. So once we have that, now I'm going to select this loop and we want to begin to round over to meet where these two materials come together. And so we're going to do exactly the same thing. Select edge loop, extrude, normal. We'll come in. Now at this point, because I've shifted everything, we can use the scale and movement tools of the tool or I'm just gonna come in here and just place these on my own individually, something like that. Grab the loop, let's pull that out. If we go to the top view, you can see that there's a little width, extra width there, and that gives us our rounded form in the top view. Then we'll go to extrude, we'll use the normal again, and there's a little chamfer just on the edge, so I'll pull that in like that. We can switch it to global, and I'll pull it out. And this time, I'm going to use the global scale. And then we'll pull it in, tuck it down, something like that. Do it again. I'm going to go back to normal. Now, if I use normal when my vertices are getting really close together, you can see there's a little crisscross. Using global will not do that. So beware that that can happen, and we just want to manage our points and make sure that we correct those at this point. Excellent. We'll select our edge loop, move that in just a little bit, something like that, because we want to begin to round over. Select the loop and extrude it one more time, and we'll do this one globally. Now, I'm going to go to this back view and just show you. We want it to meet in the center line. And in alias, a lot of times we will snap to grid. In subdivisional surfaces, one of the workflows is to use the scale tool and just scale to zero, which flattens everything out. And then I will just move that and snap to the center line as normal. Great. So we have one half of the model completed. Let's turn off the canvas and let's make some adjustments. Where these two materials come together, we don't need to break the model or separate the model into two forms. What we can do is just simply select the loop and add a hard crease, a positional transition between those two shapes. Then I can just select this next one, crease that as well, and now we have a really nice chamfer. In the drawing, you can see there's a little break on the inside. Instead of using the crease, we can also use a hold edge in order to create like a, a fillet type of shape, bevel. And if I make adjustments here, you can see that it did tighten the corner up, right? But it's really, we can't really get a tight fillet in that area. So what we wanna do 
is add a division. And once you add a division, now we have three curves. We have our main edge curve, and then two on either side, and those are what we would consider hold edges. Whenever we make a racetrack type of shape or a face loop around uh, an edge, we get a lot of control, and then we can adjust that to basically give us a really crisp, nice, tight fillet in that area. So that's fantastic. Now at this point, we're only working on one half. So let's go ahead and duplicate the model. So I'm just gonna use mirror. I wanna go across Y, so that's the X, Z. And so now we have two separate models and we need to weld those together. Let's go ahead and hide our curve and hide that. A couple concepts with welding I wanna discuss. Weld has three options or main options, target, midpoint and tolerance. Target says take this vertice and snap it to a second vertice or edge. Midpoint says take those two and wherever they meet in the middle, uh, snap them there. And then tolerance, I use tolerance when the points are basically touching each other and we need to weld such as the center line, a huge group of them. Tolerance gives us the ability basically to bounding box all of them and they're just gonna to snap to the closest neighbor or the one that's within that tolerance. Another key takeaway, Alias won't allow you just to weld a single point. Um, it doesn't allow, I think it's non-manifold geometry. You have to weld two of them. So if we just select these two, now you can see that the model immediately smoothed out in that area. I can also choose, let's say, the edge and select the other edge and it will weld those. Or, as mentioned, I can just bounding box over all of them and then they weld together. And so now we have a single cage or a single, sorry, subdivisional surface group. At this point, let's go ahead and create the base of this form. Just like we were extruding the edges, we're gonna extrude the face. Let's go ahead and turn our canvas back on so we have some reference here. And right now it's in global, which is fine. And I'm gonna pull that down. We're gonna scale that, scale it in. Oh, maybe that was a little too much. What's nice about all these tools is I real quick visual representation, and then I'm able to modify those after the fact. So we've got that pretty good. And I'll just hit the space bar to extrude again. And as we get closer and closer to the base of this object, we're gonna want to flatten these points out and we could probably go perfectly flat at this point. We'll just add, leave a little bit. And one last time, and this one will flatten 100%. Move it back. Now we could have also scaled in this direction, which is completely fine. And so we can do that after the fact that this is formed. But notice that when I select one side, if I make changes here, it's not going to reflect on the other side. So we will want to come in and add symmetrical modeling to our subdivision model. Once I have that, now I can pick those points. And when I pull one side in, the other side goes along for the ride. So that's just, you know, fantastic way of working, work on one side, have it reflect onto the other. And this is also true, let's turn off the canvas, if I say insert an edge, so notice I'm gonna insert the edge loop. It goes all the way around, but it also inserted on the other side as well. So I don't have to worry about managing both sides. And then if I wanna do something like this, add a little crown, kind of place that in the middle, pull that out, and you can see that's, that was added as well on the other side. 